Today's video is sponsored by Overleaf. All of their information will be linked below. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be talking you through how to write a scientific journal article and in particular I'm going to be focusing on the specific software that I use that makes all of my academic writing so much quicker and easier and if you're not using this I would strongly strongly recommend using Overleaf for all of your academic writing. I've been using it for about three years and I can't imagine how anybody can use anything other than that for academic writing. In case you're new here, my name is Kira, and I'm a third year PhD student based in Dublin, Ireland, and I study machine learning and computer science. Let's talk about software for academic writing. So comment down below what software you're currently using for academic writing and what might be some pros and cons because I'm always interested in knowing what other people use for different things. There's always going to be something you might come across you've never seen before. I recently did a poll on my Instagram and I was shocked and frankly disturbed to find out that the majority of you, I don't know if it's a different audience here on YouTube, but the majority of people on my Instagram are using either Microsoft Word or Apple Pages for their academic writing. So this is really more of a overleaf tutorial than an academic writing tutorial but I think it sort of has a bit of both and that's because partially when I did share about you know whether people like to use Microsoft Word or Pages or whatever or something like overleaf the amount of messages that I got from people who said they'd never even heard of overleaf or LaTeX and really wanted me to do some sort of video where I'm going through some of the basic functionalities so I hope that this will be really helpful for anybody who's thinking about getting started. I'm glad that I spent a little bit of time in the summer before my PhD getting started because the second that I started working with my supervisor it was straight into writing a document in Overleaf. So if you're getting started um, and you're going to be collaborating with other professors or whatever, I do definitely recommend getting into Overleaf. Even if you're in a further state along and you think at this point it's too late to start learning it, I really don't think it is. You will thank yourself because you will save yourself so much time. The amount of time you'll end up having to reformat things throughout your PhD. If you have a document where it's all just doing this automatically for you, honestly you'll save yourself so much time and I'll talk about a few different ways in the video that you can see that. Overleaf, who sponsored today's video, is a collaborative cloud-based LaTeX editor. I'll be going through some of the unique features that make using a LaTeX ed editor so much better than using just a normal text editor like Microsoft Pages. But essentially LaTeX is a software system where you're writing in plain text as opposed to formatted text like in Microsoft Word. And the reason why it's better to work in plain text, it means you can actually go ahead and do a lot more customizable things. And you can also load packages which will format things for you rather than having to go through the steps in Microsoft Word where you actually have to change the font size and adjust things like that for a specific conference you may be publishing to. You don't have to do any of that in Overleaf because you'll just load in a package and it will do all of that for you. I think a lot of people are quite intimidated by LaTeX because it does require what looks like code I don't know if I would really consider it that but if you can use something like Notion then you will have absolutely no problem using Overleaf and I'm going to be going through the basics of the different sort of things that I use Overleaf for but if you ever get stuck honestly I get stuck a few, every once in a while I'll forget how to do something or I'll be trying to do something new in Overleaf that I haven't necessarily done before. All I do is I just look it up and there's usually a really good guide from Overleaf or from somebody else that will have a really good explanation for how to do it and you can just copy and paste whatever is there and then fill in your own version. This is largely how I learned how to use Overleaf because there's no class or anything in my university on this but I'm going to be teaching you some of the basics of that now. So here we are in my overleaf. So you can see I have a bunch of projects going on there. But essentially when we want to start a new project, we'll just go in here. And you can see there's a bunch of different options for what we can do there. So if you want to look, we can go through like various templates. So this is one of my favorite things about overleaf is that there are all these really nicely formatted templates that you can choose from. So for example, all of these different conferences and everything like that. So a lot of the time when you're going to publish to either a scientific journal or conference or an academic conference or whatever it is, 
there will be a formatting guide and either you would have to do that yourself, which you do in either your Word document or whatever, or you could just use a really handy Overleaf template and work away on that. So we're gonna use this template here. Um, so let's open this as a template and you can see all of this loads up. So the way we have this in Overleaf, we have two sort of screens. One is gonna be the actual source text that we're working with. You can basically ignore most of what's here. And then on the right hand side, we have our fully formatted PDF. And this usually has a bunch of different examples of different things that you can do, just so that you have a sense of how you actually do all of this. And so this will format absolutely everything. So it will do all of the like numbering of images, the numbering of sections. So if you decide on a later date to, you know, add a new section or add a new image, you don't have to go back and renumber all of these things. So if you're working on a smaller paper, it might not be a big deal, but when you come to do your PhD thesis and it's gonna be hundreds of pages long with who knows how many sections and who knows how many images, that if you decide to move around things, it's so annoying to have to go and reformat all of that. It's so much easier to just have this automatic process where when you add all of this information, it will do that by itself. So you can also work, if you don't wanna, if you don't really feel comfortable working in the source, you can also work in rich text, which is a little bit closer to using a formatted Word document. And so like you can then go ahead and, you know, do different things yourself. It'll give you some hints. So you can, for example, pop in section heading and it will put that in for you. So then you can say new section. And that's a little bit easier if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed by working with the other side. I would definitely recommend working in the source just because it is, I suppose you can do a little bit more in terms of how powerful it is. So a lot of this initial information so here you'll notice that we are in the dot tech file you can't fully see the name there but it's a dot tech file and this is going to be our actual file that we're working in and filling in all of our information all of these others are you know different guides and um, this is going to be our bibliography and um, this is just an image for the example image as this one here is going to be a lot of the actual info so a lot of what's in this green, these are all comments. So these are just information people have decided to add in, but we don't need any of that. So a couple of things we'll have, we have copyright information. So that's usually gonna be the journal that does all of that. And then we're beginning our document here. So in terms of the coding elements, a lot of what you're doing is gonna be backslash and then whatever it is that you're doing. So here we just have backslash title. The name of this title is hope. And then we have all of our author information. So this is gonna be how we write in an author and it'll sort of depend what template you're looking at. So basically if I was taking over this template, all I would do would I would basically put in my sample title, whatever it is, and then I would change all of these. I wouldn't like delete all of this information because how the information is laid out here is usually how they want it laid out. Then when we want to put in our own information, we can just recompile and then it will put in our new information. It does take a little second, but then you'll see that it's all like really well formatted. So I'm just gonna get out of here. So you can see now I've got my name in here instead and then the sample title is what I put in. Okay, and then these are all still authors. So we're putting in all of the detailed information for the authors, which may or may not show up on the paper itself. Then when we're getting into different sections, the first that we have is our abstract. So we have begin abstract here. And again, we can just delete whatever is in here and put in our own points for abstract. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all of the rest of the stuff in here just so that we can start working with it properly. Okay, so we've got all of that information. Now, basically when we're trying to do different sections, the command that we use is the backslash and then section um, introduction. So that's how we make a new section and it will become totally formatted whatever way we want. Great. So this, you can see this one is numbered. So if I go ahead and add in some more sections, you can see that the future sections that I add will be numbered as well.
So these are the sections that I've added for this work. And this will be typically how a scientific paper would be laid out. You'd have an introduction that sort of frames the problem that you're trying to solve as being important and why basically it's interesting to be studied, why it's important to be studied. Then oftentimes in scientific papers, which is something that I'm in the process of learning, moving from a more computer science paper to a science paper, is that we have a method section, which is typically a short section. And then you usually have a separate supplementary section with all of the rest of the methods. Then we have results, which is very black and white. Here are the results. And then a discussion, which allows for more interpretation of the results. And often we'll be bringing in literature here to back up some of what you might be discussing in the discussion. And then lastly, we have our conclusion, which just sort of wraps it up. And usually you'll have a bit of information about future work in there. The difference I've found so far in computer science papers, I think we typically have this sort of introduction and related work section and then a more detailed method section within the paper of like the models and everything. And then an evaluation, which does include a lot of discussion and then a conclusion. So it's just a bit different, but I think that is this, the main difference. And then let's say we want to add in some subsections then. So what we would do is we would add in just by typing in backslash subsection. So let's just say result one. And then if we want even a sub subsection, we add that in. And that's sort of as far as it goes with subsections. You don't want it to become too messy. If it starts to have this many, it probably means that you need a bigger document, which probably isn't necessary in most. And it'll very much depend depending on what template you're using, how all of this does get formatted. But just so that you can see how these look, I'm going to compile this. Okay, so this is how it's composed here. One thing that's really handy about sections and the way things are done in Overleaf is that you can actually reference different sections. So you can add a label. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm adding a label. So then if I'm talking in, let's say, the discussion, and then I say as per section ref results. Actually, what's usually handy in the way that I would do this is I would also just add a little thing that lets me know it's a section and not a graph. But you can see now that when I've added this bit of text in underneath the discussion, it will say as per and it will number the sections for me. There's a discussion. Yeah, as per section three. And then this, you can see it actually even has a link there so I can click on it and we'll go. So if you have more specific labels to different subsections, it'll allow you to go to those different places, which is really handy. If you're constantly referencing your figures and your tables and your sections throughout your document, if it's all automatically formatted like this, so that means if you're adding new things, if you're moving things around, all of that will happen automatically. So it means you don't have to go back when you've changed a section from 3.2 to 3.3 and go back and change all of those because it will do that for you, which I think is the most handy thing if you're working on any large document. Okay, so let's say in our method section, we need to do some equations. So this will be more for like a scientific or mathematical paper. But again, essentially what we'll be doing here is starting an equation. We will begin and then in curly brackets, we're gonna say equation. And then that will just end the equation so it knows where to start and stop. And you can sort of write in anything here. Um, so you could say X plus y equals seven and it will format this as an equation see so we have a number on this equation again so if we want we can add a label and this will mean that later on when we're referencing it we can say equation what is going on so we can say as per equation ref equation and then we should be able to see in our method section how we can reference that and again, these are numbered, which is really helpful. So in terms of making equations, you can do pretty much anything, anything for like integration. So you can do pretty much any mathematical symbols in here. Usually anytime I have to do any sort of complicated equations, I will look it up. Um, and the same thing goes for any algorithms. You can do the same thing. So I'm just going to look up an example. This is usually how I will find new things to do in Overleaf. So if I need to figure out how to do an algorithm, I'll look up you'll see I've already looked this up before. So let's just throw this in. You can see there's typically like really good examples of different things that you might want to do. And this one's actually nicer. So let's include that. 
And again, you might need to include these packages. I'm guessing these are already included just because it is a, an ACM example. So let's just check. Oh, maybe not. So basically, I just want to put this outside of the begin document. So wherever we have the document. So now when we recompile this, this is all in there. So that just shows how that works. And again, we can add labels to all of these things. And that means that they will be easier to reference later on. Same thing when it comes to doing any tables. So we might want to have some tables in our results section. So again, we can just look up, we have a whole section here on how to do that. So you can see all different types of tables, ones that have open, ones that are lined, ones that have things like this. So let's see what type do we want to do. This is an interesting type because it has sort of a multi-line element. Let's just do this really simple looking one here. So this is going to use a package multi-row, which you probably have to add in. When you are doing any papers for a specific conference or journal, you usually don't want to change whatever their formatting guide is. So if they haven't used certain um, packages, then you may not want to. Um, some of them will be not liking that, but some of them won't mind. But it's just good to, make, to maybe check that in advance. So let's go ahead and add this table in and then we'll recompile. And again, everything that I'm showing, we will add labels to if we're referencing them. And then when we're trying to change the data, basically we'll just change these things in here and this will change whatever's in here. So if we wanna change this to 99, that comes through. So it's easy enough to do things like that. The next thing that I want to show is how to create some sort of figure. So, so we will just use begin figure and then it will sort of automatically do some stuff for us already. So centering will just make sure that it's in the middle of the document. Um, a label it will add so we I would usually have that so you can see it's sort of a default to put in the fig my label and then include graphics so this is going to be looking for one of our figures from somewhere in here so usually what I would do is I would create a folder called figs and I'll put any figures for the paper in here so we can do upload and what you can do is you can drag any pictures that you might have and then you can see that we have in our results, we have as per, where did we write that in? Oh yeah, as depicted in figure one. And again, these are all labeled and you can see our captions come in there as well. So those are some of the basics in terms of the sort of things that you can include in the document and how you can then reference those. The main thing that I think is so exciting about it is like the automatic formatting in terms of the document. Like we don't have to put anything in place to make sure that these are the right size it will just sort of come out that way and in terms of the actual labeling of things as well it's just so convenient so the next important thing i suppose about this is that when it comes to doing our references at the end of our document when we've been referencing you know and citing different materials formatting the bibliography or the references section is really really handy in Overleaf. Um, so I believe this will do this already for us. So you can see that we have over here the sample base.bib. So we have a bunch of example bib entries. These are bibliography entries. You can see that this is an article. This is the key name. So it's by Patricia S. Averill and Robert Plant. The, pa the patent holders dilemma, buy, sell or troll from communications of the ACM and it just has all of the information. So when you're going to look up a paper, so let's just say if we go on to, the reason I use Google Scholar for this is it just always has the bib file entry. So let's look up my Kira Feely. So let's look up me. So these are all my papers here and you can see to cite the paper, we've got all of these options. So you can always copy and paste these into your Word document. However, it's much better to have the bib entry, which is like this, that you can then put into a rolling bib file. So I, for this, obviously I'm just using the example, but I will typically have a rolling bib file that I use for all of my papers and my thesis, which every time I have a new paper that comes out, either one of mine or one that I added to my literature review, I will just add that to the rolling bib file. And this will always contain everything that I need. So if I go back to our paper then, and I want to reference one of these, so let's say we're just going to do this the results section for example and then what we're going to do here is a backslash site 
and then whatever our reference is. So if this one does have mine, yep. Okay, I realized I deleted the bibliography, which is not ideal. So I am going to put that back in and that should hopefully... So this is telling us to use the ACM reference format for our bibliography. And you can see now that when I'm citing all of these things, so if I want to cite myself as well, it should come up and then we will have all of these showing up in our references. And again, it'll organize the references depending on whatever reference style the conference wants. Sometimes that's alphabetical, sometimes it's by order of appearance. You never know. But basically, as you continue to cite different things throughout the paper, it will all just show up in your references. Now, I know that there is like plugins you can use for Word and everything like that. But to me, nothing is handier than just having one big bibliography file and then just being able to upload that into any paper and then just having access to all of your references really easily. So once basically the most important thing is going to be having them labeled properly. So I wouldn't say that this is a good label. What I would usually have would be Feely 2020 and then a keyword. So I would have said something like um, race time prediction, something like that, because I know what that paper would mean then. So that means it's a lot quicker when loading up the papers. So it also makes it really easy to collaborate with authors. So first of all, you can share with a bunch of people. So you can type in their emails and then they will be shared. You can either share as a read only or a edit. And you can also turn on different things. So you can basically, when you're doing any edits, one thing that you can do is track changes. So that means that when you make a change, they'll all come in here. So if there's one main person working on the paper and one person who would just be doing small changes, then, and you want to be the one to approve them, you can have that come through. So this is where the sort of review comes through, this AB review. So you can have, no, I'm not gonna accept that change. Oh yes, I am gonna accept that change. And it just makes collaboration really easy. Um, I've always found collaborating on documents kind of difficult, but I think with Overleaf, it actually makes it a lot easier. And you can see where other people are in the document. I think Google Documents is okay for that as well, but you know, it doesn't have the rest of the functionality that I think Overleaf does. In terms of other applications of Overleaf, I've been slowly moving all of my writing into Overleaf. I think when I started using it, it was still like a little bit daunting. So I started by just having like Word documents and then moving stuff in slowly. And now I've started just like, anytime I'm starting a new document, I'll move things in there. And I've even started to use it for things like my CV just because it's a lot cleaner in terms of how it comes out. And you can see they have all these different templates that really make it um, easy to use. For large files, so for example, we have to do a stage two transfer, which is where you write sort of a 30 page document around your sort of thesis. It's almost like a proposal, but it's not quite. And that has different chapters. So the way that I organize that then is you have different dot tech files within the same overleaf that will be each chapter. And I found that's a lot cleaner and easier to use than having one big Word document and or having multiple Word documents that you then can't reference between. So what I like is that I can have completely different chapters and I can reference a different chapter section really easily when I'm using Overleaf. In terms of getting started with Overleaf, my recommendation would be to just start. Um, it is free to use in terms of some of the features like adding multiple people to your documents. I think in the free version, you can add one person. And then if you want to add multiple people, you do have to get onto the pro version. But a lot of universities will have free memberships. And there's also a referral program where you can sort of earn a free membership. So I do think it's pretty easy to use and mostly free. And if you are not using this or some sort of LaTeX based academic writing tool, you need to start. Um, it's one of those things I wish I had done so much earlier and I wish I had known about so much earlier because I wrote my entire master's thesis in a Word document and the formatting was so annoying. I can't understand how people can continue doing that in the higher levels of academia and why nobody really tells you about it. So what really surprised me, I think, was that so many of you didn't know about it and hadn't used it before or might be feeling daunted. So I hope that this was helpful and I really want to thank Overly for sponsoring today's video and just for their product in general. I've been using it, as I said, for three years now and it's made sort of difference in terms of my academic writing. Thank you all for watching. Thanks to all of my wonderful members and I'll see you all in the next video.